This is the plaintiff, Sarah. She says two ferocious Rottweilers attacked her dog, and it was like watching a lion attacking an antelope he wanted to eat. Her poor dog was shaken like a stuffed animal, and all she could do was scream because she didn't know what else to do. Her dog ended up spending five hours in surgery and four days in an ICU. Luckily, he survived. The defendants never apologized, won't pay for the vet bills, and she's suing for every single penny of the $5,000 she's owed. These are the defendants, Trevor, Megan, and Kathleen. Megan says her mother Kathleen is disabled and was in the yard and somehow the dogs got loose. The plaintiff's dog ended up biting her mother. Her eight-year-old kids were traumatized by the overly dramatic plaintiff who spit in her face and threatened her. And they don't owe this woman anything. They're accused of letting their dogs loose. The defendants have filed a countersuit for $5,000 for pain and suffering and medical bills. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're okay, in. everyone's asked not to refer to their last name, so we'll respect that. Sarah, you're suing Trevor and Megan and Kathleen for $5,000. According to you, your vet bills actually exceed that and have, are, are in the $7,000, $8,000 range. Um, because according to you, their dog attacked your dog. You have a counterclaim against them, or Kathleen, does. who's Kathleen? Okay, you, Kathleen has a counterclaim against her for $76 in medical bills and $4,924 in pain and suffering to reach the 5,000 statutory max as well. Let me hear from you first. I decided to take my dog, Vinny, uh, for a walk on June 19th, 2015, around 11.30. He was on a leash. And I was walking down the defendant's street, and I heard no stop yelling from the defendant's house. And I turned around, and I saw these two big dogs. Later found out they were Rottweilers. And they were just charged and running down the yard through the open gate. And before- uh, Was that a home? Yeah. Okay, and so the, the gate was open at the home? Yeah, I just want to explain to you the way house is situated. The defendant's house is situated in the back. They have a huge front yard. And this, even though it's fenced, the gate was completely open. So okay, these, was it open because it was broken or was the gate door that you walk in and, and out of was open? No, it was the driveway gate. Uh -huh. At that point, uh -huh. I didn't know it was broken. Okay. Later on, the defendant uh, agreed uh, it was broken. Okay. She stated, and I have a notarized report for that. Okay. Um, so these two Rottweilers came out through the gate to the street where I was on a leash with my dog. And before I could pick up Vinny to protect him, one of the Rottweiler got Vinny and he sustained critical injuries. Did Vinny die? No, thank okay. God. All right. Thank God. So what happened? Well, I'm screaming because I didn't know what to do. This is all new for me, and I'm trying to help Vinny, and I screamed, and this Rottweiler did not let go of him. It was almost like he was treating him like a rag doll. And luckily, there were some neighbors coming around us, and one of the neighbors what separated. What kind of dog is Vinny, I'm sorry? Kakapu, and okay. he was 20 pounds, a okay. small, fluffy dog, oh. healthy dog. Okay. And one of the neighbors separated them. And I went closer to him to console him. He was crying, and he bit me because he was traumatized. And at this point, the defendant, the older woman who was left this dogs under the care of, um, she came down to the street, and I was like, how could you leave the gate open when you have these two ferocious dogs? I was told, you know, I'm coming to check on your dog. And I told her, get away from us, get away from my dog. 
And another neighbor who was kind enough came and got us, you know, put us in the car and took us to the veterinarian. And he said, um, Vinny is critical, and do you want us to revive him? And we said, do whatever you need to do. Please help him. And the surgeon had told us that he has a hernia and uh, multiple rib fractures and more skin injuries. So the surgeon had told us to go home. So me and my husband drove on the street, a defendant street, and we saw a man and a woman right in front of the attack, where the attack happened. So we both got off the car and we said, how could you let this happen? Okay, are you referring to the two of them when you say we saw a man and a woman? Yes. Okay, go on. No. It wasn't no, the two of you? Who was it? I've never even met them. Who are you to... Well, I think it's... Who, what, you are Trevor? Yes. All right, and what is your relationship to Megan? I'm her husband. Okay, who were you out there with? Uh, a friend of mine came to help me. Um, my daughter had been in the hospital, so he was coming to help me. My mom had to go to the hospital. I had a newborn, and I have two other kids. So he was there with us when they arrived. All right, so you weren't present, correct? I was not present when the and, event occurred. And I was you were not, after. yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. You were not present when the event occurred. No, I, for any of it. Okay, okay, but you were. I was. All right, what happened? Uh, I was out in the driveway. I had just uh, washed both the dogs. Um, my daughter was in the hospital with my new granddaughter, who was premature, having breathing problems, and we were expecting... How's she doing? Uh, she's getting better. Uh, we were expecting them home um, with, you know, that day. Uh, so I decided that the smartest thing to do, being that she was having breathing problems, was to clean off the driveway, get rid of the debris and whatever, you know, leaf debris, you know, any pollen or anything, make sure the dogs were clean, make sure the vacuums and, you know, the floors and the floors were clean. Um, so I was pretty much done with all of that. I had washed the dogs. I just sat down. Um, with my eight-year-old granddaughter. Okay, did you have any help, or were you able to do that? Well, my, my eight-year-old granddaughter is a giant help. Okay. <laughs> um, it was basically directing traffic, pretty much. Um, I had just sat down, and he, uh, this is Mac, he's my, he's my service dog. He saw the plaintiff and her dog walking up the street. They had just started to approach our property. When you say approach your property, they're on the public right away. They were right? on the road, okay. uh, but they were just coming into view because there's blockage on the neighbor's side. Mm -hmm. He alerted, uh, he just barked. He, he pretty much picked up his head and barked. Uh, at that point, she, uh, the plaintiff looked over, saw the two dogs who were still laying down at that point and yanked her dog up and the dog yelped. I totally understand. Right. You know, they're big dogs. Yeah, they're Rottweilers. And, it, and there's and an open gate. Why is the gate open? Uh, well, is it I broken? Couldn't, not any longer. No, was it broken then? Yes, it So was. why are you washing the two dogs without a leash in the front yard where they can go to the street? Ordinarily, they do not leave the property. Yeah, I know. He Everybody never leaves the property. They have total and complete mastery and control over the dog until they don't. Until the dog acts like a dog, sees something it wants, and comes out. I mean, this is, a, you know, this may be your first case. It's not mine. This is what I do all day long. There's no reason to have the gate open. And if okay. it is open and you can't get around to fixing it, keep your dogs inside or when they're outside, have them on leash because you have to have your dogs under control. And that's where the problem lies. Now, you, you, what happens? The dogs okay. get out. So the dogs get out. Um, actually, Mac never left the property. Buddy ran out. Is this Mac or Buddy? This is Mac. Where's Buddy? At home. Buddy's at home. Okay. Lay down. You said his name. <laughs> um, Buddy got out. He did grab the dog. Um, there was a bit of a tussle, a tug of war. Um, the neighbors came over. They got the dog separated. I came out. I made sure the dog got in the gate. I made sure the, the neighbor was closing the gate. Um, and I went over to make sure that she was okay and to see if the dog was okay. Uh, I reached out. The dog bit me a couple of times on the hand. Uh, he was upset. Her dog. Yes. Right. He was upset. She was upset. I totally understand. At that point, I was bleeding. Um, it, was not, it was not stopping. And I called my daughter to let her know what was going on. And Pardon she'd me. had the baby how Sit. much earlier? She was, she uh, was the in baby the was Sit. two months old, okay. if that. Yeah. All right, so tell me your contact with her. Her husband got out of the car and asked what the address was. 
I gave him the address. She got out of the car. I turned to her. I said, I really hope that your dog's okay. I'm really sorry this happened. And she started screaming at me. How dare you do this to me? What is wrong with you? I said, listen, I wasn't home. I was not there to prevent this. I feel horrible. You don't need to be there to prevent it. You need to keep your gate closed. No, I It needs to be closed. I completely so. understand. And if you're leaving two Rottweilers in the care of somebody who can't close it, that's a problem, too. Excuse and me. everything's fine. Oh, I'm washing the dogs in the front. What, what's the problem? Me. No, no. Excuse you me. You got it. No. No, I will not excuse you. I'm in the middle of talking and you can't interrupt me. And I don't want to hear any more testimony from you. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Um, kind of special today. Uh, we're in L.A. and we are going to talk to people on the TMZ uh, celebrity tour bus because, hi guys. <laughs> because we figured, let's let's get a sample of people from all over the country, tourists and whatnot, talk about the People's Court, talk about where they're from and whatnot. This case, my question is, uh, you got a dog owner who says, I didn't know the gate was broken. Is that ever a defense if the dogs get out? No, it is not a defense, Harvey. It is not. A why not? I mean, why not if the person says, look, I did everything. Okay, I didn't know the, I didn't know the gate was broken. Because at the end of the day, you have huge dogs and you should know that you should use extra protection to keep your dogs in. Fair point. What do you think? I've got a dog and I would be responsible even if my gate got broken. But what if they just didn't know? You're always liable for personal property. It's under uh, unlimited liability. Okay, what's the song? What's the song I'm thinking of? let the dogs out. <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. You're the reason that this happened, ma'am. You shouldn't be washing those dogs in the front lawn. Even if you meant well, you should be telling that eight-year-old who apparently is spick, spick and spanning the entire house, helping you wash dogs, she can close the gate. It was incredibly careless. She should not come home to this if you're trying to help her. She should not come home to this. This was more important, but nobody thought. Nobody thought about it. It wasn't on purpose. Nobody thought about it. So she's out there, according to you, she's screaming a high heaven and going nuts and everything else. And then what happens? They got in the car and they left. I went back to the house and I tried to put together my house. I had to take my mother to the emergency room. Because, because of? She, she was bitten. Okay. Can I see the emergency room papers? So you go to the hospital and you're suing for $5,000 based on your injuries at the hospital. But So what were your injuries? Uh, my finger was bitten. The top was bitten off. Uh, I have some nerve damage. The Do you nail have any bed. evidence that you have any nerve damage? No. From a doctor? That would. I, okay. I did not ask the doctor to start. I mean, I showed what did her they do in the follow-up. What, what did they do at the hospital? Uh, they cleaned it out, they debrided it, uh, they gave me a tetanus shot, and they bandaged it up. All right, look, you're 100% right, you're 100% wrong. On your lawsuit for the dog biting you, I have to decide, well, why did that happen? Well, that happened because the two Rottweilers got out through the gate where you had them unleashed in front of the house, and they were able to get out through the gate. So the fact that the dog bites you is predictable. Folks, you need to understand that in these cases, we're never looking at what the dog did. We're looking at, the dog's an animal. They're supposed to act like animals. What we need are the humans to act responsibly. So when liability is assessed, it's based on the conduct of the humans. You get that, right? It's all about the gate. So on your counterclaim against her, zero, because it happened because you left the gate open and had the dogs unleashed in front. And on your lawsuit against them, the statutory maximum is $5,000. Your medicals are way above that. I, I'm awarding you the $5,000 and ordering them to pay you. Thank Good you. luck, folks. Thank you. So the defendants are out of the courtroom right here. You just heard that you lost this case. You shed tears during the case. What was going through your mind there? Mom? Well, um, you know, again, it's a regrettable thing. No one ever denied that, you know, the dog got hurt. Do you understand that you're completely in the wrong, even though you're nice people? We understand. And the, it, it's very unfortunate and should never have happened. If you're going to wash the dogs, you have to wash them inside the locked gate next time, right? Of course. All right, so you've learned the lesson here? You have any last word here? Normally the gate's closed. Normally, but it wasn't. But since then we've fixed the gate and installed a run. Okay. All right, right around the corner, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so you just got the maximum award. Step in here, does that, uh, does that make you feel better? Yep, and you know, justice has been served, and hopefully Vinny's case is a lesson to all the 
dog owners, big dog owners, dangerous ones, to be more responsible. How's Vinny doing? He's doing good. He's doing great. Thank God. Today is his birthday. Happy birthday, Vinny. Mm -hmm. Harvey? Okay, the damages here were a lot. The reason they chose small claims is simple. It is cheaper and quicker.